Well, what I'm in need of at the moment, I've got my father-in-law seriously ill in a care home. And time is the essence, we've been told. What it is, he got a court anniversary clock made in West Germany, I think it was, in the 60s. He bought it in Dorley, where he lives. The pendant on the bottom is not rotating. It was working up to a few months ago. Uh, we've got a feeling that the actual clock itself, the movements, is not working neither. But he needs this clock doing SAP. We have been ringing quite a few people and they're saying because it's a quartz watch run by her battery, they couldn't help us. If it had been a mechanical one where you wind it up, we've got no problem. But like I say, we want to try and do everything we can for him because every time we speak to him, the first thing he mentions is the clock. So it's playing on his mind and we we want him to have a restful time without worrying about his clock. You know, I want to carry out his wishes as I can because I've known him 45, nearly 50 years and he's been, a, you know, he's been a second dad to me and I want to carry his wishes out. So John has just left me this uh, anniversary clock, which is a, uh, a quartz clock. And as you heard in the uh, uh, in the radio interview, there it's a very sentimental piece, and um, I've agreed to uh, give it a go at repairing it for him. It's been repaired before in the past. The uh, outer case has been uh, has been cut away to accept a, a slightly different uh, movement. Also, the rear door is the pin is broken on it, but I'll, I'll try and sort that. So, what I'm going to try and do is, uh, uh, as I'm going to replace the the mechanism here, which should be a fairly simple job, but I'm also going to uh, try and repair the uh, the pendulum unit here because this is not worked since the replacement of that movement because it, it didn't drive it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a more modern pendulum uh, drive motor underneath the case, uh, which will mean making some uh, some brass spacers to to just raise the uh, the height of the whole clock slightly to give me the room under there and then I'm going to make a, uh, a brass uh, cover plate uh, just for the front so that you don't see the actual motor itself and uh, then I'll also repair the uh, the pins on the uh, on the door uh, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do that yet I'll either uh, solder a couple of pieces on or maybe actually screw a couple of little um, uh, extra sections on there. First job I'm going to do is to um, take it apart and then I'm going to measure up the space we've got and see what uh, what movements uh, are available and are uh, appropriate for the for the job. So to make the original pendulum turn, what I'm doing is I'm using a modern um, drive motor, which will um, come through from the bottom here. So what I think I can do is I can um, I can use the existing hole, and uh, hopefully with fairly minimal modification, I can mount the uh, the movement. I'm going to need to drill a small hole in the bottom of this, and then I can make use of the original pendulum. But I've taken the old um, part of the mechanism for locking the, uh, the pendulum out because that's going to obviously be in the way of the hole for the movement. And I've uh, got the, uh, the motor here and that's going to go up through that hole there. Um, it's a bit uh, sloppy in that hole so what I'm going to do is make a small spacer just to centre it to that hole. And then uh, I was just looking at the location of the um, of the movement itself to see how much space we've got available with the pendulum in and the uh, there's a this guard here which means that the pendulum can't go um, 
in any higher than that and by the time we've got the movement in as well uh, that means that this pin here at the bottom of the original pendulum uh, I'm going to have to shorten that a little bit and I'm going to have to drill a hole into that as well which is what will locate it to the pin on the centre of the motor here so we'll get on and do that next Okay, so that's really not going to work because the casting of this plastic, the, however it was formed, uh, is nowhere near uh, concentric. So I'm not going to be able to drill a small hole up the centre of that. This is what I was just talking about, uh, the clearance, that we're going to have to uh, shorten this pin on the bottom of the uh, pendulum here because the shaft of the motor actually doesn't, um, doesn't allow for the full length of that pin so I'm just going to mark that up and cut it to length. Little test fit just to see that everything fits as I'm expecting and works. There's quite a bit of run out but uh, as I said when I was looking at the lathe it's to do with the the way the plastic has been cast that pin is not actually cast as a as a concentric accurate part of the uh, of the pendulum. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have enough clearance for that not to be an issue. Just having a little think about what to do about this um, spacer that I was going to do to centre it and I thought the neatest thing would actually be not to have this nasty plastic nut that comes with the motor uh, but to actually do a little captive um, just a friction press in um, brass threaded uh, nut that would look a bit more like the original um, um, pendulum support so I just had a a rummage through the taps and dies and we found that the uh, found out what this plastic nut is so it's an M7 so I'll uh, just run up a little um, captive uh, brass nut to go in here in the lathe so that'll um, centre the motor and it'll give it um, something to actually screw into that looks nicer
Here's the nut spacer arrangement. Right, we'll just press into there. So the other aspect is putting in the uh, normal quartz movement, which uh, is what will drive the hands. Uh, this has already been modified away from what it would have had originally. Uh, which makes the job a bit easier in fact because all I need to do is uh, is fit a new a new unit On these Seiko movements, you can actually see the uh, mechanism ticking. Right, so I've done a few little bits and bobs off camera, but um, this is the plate that uh, the bottom of the movement uh, sits on. And it was missing its screws. Well, it had sort of half of one of its screws. Uh, so what I've done is just to... Um, knock up a couple of, uh, of screws that it can um, uh, be secured with and they have nuts uh, inside there as well uh, so I'll just go ahead and fit those, it's a little bit fiddly to show on camera and then I've also cleaned up the um, hardware for the, uh, uh, the pillars and things so I'll reassemble that and we can get the uh, movement and pendulum uh, assembled. There is to sort out the uh, pins on the door these are the hinge pins uh, which are just cut from the same sheet as the door and th this one is bent and this one is snapped off completely. So what I'm going to do is just jump onto the milling machine and mill out these uh, little uh, uh, pieces that I'm going to screw on. And what I've done is to make a pair of them I've just uh, super glued a pair of uh, off cuts of, of brass together. So I'll uh, drill the holes for the threaded holes and then I'll uh, mill the uh, the shape, the outer shape, before splitting them apart to have two parts. These are the little hinges, little repair sections if you like, so uh, they will just screw into the uh, corners of the existing door, act as a hinge for the door. Here's the little spaces that I've made just to jack the, uh, the whole clock up a little bit to give clearance for the movement here. It doesn't give uh, much thread for the feet to bite onto but uh, it's sufficient. 
And finally, we'll just stick the little plate that we made, which I've now just lacquered. Stick that down using some double-sided tape just to hold it in place. Our last job is to put the battery back in the motor at the bottom. And there we have it. Here we have it, the completed repair. Uh, so you can see the pendulum is now working, albeit it's not uh, integrated to the movement up here, it's being driven by a completely separate motor down here. Uh, but on this type of clock that doesn't matter because you've, you've got a quartz unit that's actually driving the hands, the pendulum is just for show. So made up little spaces and you can see there's a, a plate down here which is just covering the uh, movement so that you don't uh, see the plastic box of the uh, of the motor unit and I've given it all a little bit of a uh, I stripped all the case down gave it all a bit of a wash and uh, got some of the verdigris off the base plate it was going green and the back door which was um, which was broken the hinges were broken I've made these repair sections and uh, screwed it screwed it on so that the door now is uh, is operating again and not falling off and uh, you can see there the uh, replacement movement which had already been uh, modified as we said earlier and there's the completed clock one clock Oh. oh, I'm very pleased that it's working in the pendants of going. Marvellous. Marvellous. Thank Dad. you so much. Okay. Dad will be very pleased on that. Because we, we were going to leave it till his birthday. Yeah. But we're going to give it him now on, on Father's Day. Oh, oh right. Yeah, wonderful. It's been wonderful. quite poorly. Yeah. Been very yeah. well this week. Well. I'm very pleased for that because, like I say, it has made me ill. I've been at home and I've been worried. Uh, is it going to be done? I'm going to have the phone call. Is it? They can't do it. You know, seeing it today is unbelievable. Marvellous. And I'm very pleased for regular shops. Very and, and yourself to have uh, repairing. Yep, no problem. So much for Dad. No problem. I'm pleased to have been able to help. Thank you. Could you, you remember the, the state we brought it in and it, nothing was moving? You know, it's completely cleaned up as well now, isn't it? It, it? Looks, brand new. it, looks, it looks brand new, and like I say, seeing them balls going out and the actual fingers uh, as well working that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Karen, what's this going to mean to your father when you, when you take it to see him? I just think he'll be um, quite emotional, um, but he will be very happy. Very happy. And how are you feeling? If this must be, you know, to see it all going round, see it working, it must it's be... It's unbelievable. And as I said, I'm just so grateful. Um, there's a lot of bad stuff with COVID and things gone on. But a lot of bad people, but there's also a lot of kind people as well. And this gentleman is one. And I'm so grateful. Tommy, what's the, what's the repair been like then? You've been working on this for us. How's it been? Yeah, it's been um, pretty straightforward, really. I was um, I, I was able to to fit the unit in um, without too much modification. As I say, the only thing was I needed to gain a little bit more height yeah. to to fit the motor in underneath. Uh, but that was pretty uh, straightforward in the end with some spaces. Uh, luckily, the threads in the bottom of the pillars were long enough to uh, uh, to not need extending or anything. So. Um, I could get those spaces on and still screw the feet on okay. And because looking at the clock, you know, from where we're standing here, you, you can't notice there's any sort of modifications to the bottom at all. Uh, well, that was the, uh, the idea, really, is just to make it, um, you know, sensitive. And then when it's actually up, if it goes up on a, a higher mantelpiece or something, you can, um, there's a, like a, a plate to make it so that it um, isn't as visible. It's, it's uh, just like the frame of the top. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah. Very professional. Yeah. You've yeah. made a very good job of yeah. it. But I'm, 
and space all the land. for all the land that you've put radio structure and your south tower. You know, I thought we would never get this wish we carried out. out. We were losing very losing hope, you know. Like I say, it has made me all have been yeah. awake all, all hours of the night and worrying about the clock and coming today and seeing it actually working. It's unbelievable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's no. get it back, shall we? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much again, no Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's nice to walk out with something working. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks okay. again. Okay. Cheers. No problem at all.